Hey, what is going on YouTube? Nate here with Hustle Buddies where we share tools, tips, and advice for Amazon sellers. Now in today's video, I'm gonna be breaking down very quickly how to create a shipment, list, pack prep, all that stuff within Inventory Lab. This has been a really common question over this past week. A lot of people in our Facebook group have been asking um, how to use Inventory Lab like a beginner's guide. So you guys asked and we delivered, all right? Stay tuned. All right, so let's dive in here to Inventory Lab. Now I do wanna preface this with, Inventory Lab has a ton of different features. This video isn't gonna be going over all those features. If you're interested in that, check out this video over there somewhere. <laughs> I'll put a link up at the top um, and you can click on that to see the other features like the accounting things and all that stuff that we use Inventory Lab for. Um, but this is just specifically like a beginner's guide to creating a shipment and a batch and all that and shipping it out, all right? So let's let's dive into this. So. The first thing that you're going to need to do is go up here to list and then list and prep. And that will bring you to this current screen that we are on. Okay, next you need to create a brand new batch. So click over there for new batch. You can call this whatever you want. We'll do YouTube test, okay? Um, you don't need to include that, your ship from address. Make sure that this is your home address. You can set all these settings up, um, like the defaults in your settings in Inventory Lab, okay? Your packaging type, you are most likely doing individual products unless you are selling things by the case. This would be like if you order something wholesale and you get a case of say, I don't know, 12 in a box or something like that and, and you're shipping them. Um, most likely you'll be doing individual products where you sort of have a mix of things going all together. Um, your channel is probably going to be FBA rather than merchant fulfilled. Um, but this is also F FBM, those are synonyms, but most likely you'll be doing FBA. Another side note is for merchant fulfilled stuff, um, we're usually just listing that through um, the Amazon seller app when we're in store. I don't often list things FBM through Inventory Lab. I find that to be an unnecessary extra step. All right, next is your workflow type. Now there's a lot of debate here on a, and a lot of people think that their way is, is always the correct way. Uh, and this, there really is no one size fits all answer here. Um, I think a big part comes down to personal preference. And I think a big part comes down to um, what types of things you're actually shipping out and then your workflow in general. So the differences between a private and a live, a private batch is, you list everything and it's all saved within Inventory Lab and then you press a button and it all, all together in one big lump gets sent off to Amazon and Amazon will then tell you what warehouses it goes to and all of that. Um, the benefits with doing it that way is you tend to send things to less warehouses and things are much more easily changeable prior to pressing that button because nothing is actually live yet. It's just sort of like a hypothetical shipment. So if it's accidentally like, oh, actually I didn't have that book or, oh shoot, this thing has a rip in it and I don't actually wanna list that. It's much easier to change things around with your private batch, okay? Now the downsides of private batch is that once you actually create the shipment, you will then have to put things into their respective boxes. So it does add a, an extra touch point. With live, you don't have to do that end process of selecting the box because you're doing that while you are listing things. It's all done in real time in live time. The downsides to the live mode are that it's a little bit harder to change things around. So let's say you're, you're selling this book and then all of a sudden you see, oh shoot, I had another one. It's a little bit harder to change those numbers after the fact using a live batch. It's, I mean, it's doable, it's completely fine. There's just another extra step involved, okay? So um, for us, our personal preference if I'm selling clothing, usually I'm doing a private batch. And if I'm selling big things like grocery, where I know like I have a stack of 50 cans of that and 100 cans of that, things like that, I'm usually doing a live batch for those things. But it's totally personal preference. You try them both out, see which one you like. Labeling preferences. Uh, for this, I will label all my own items. I'm gonna, I'm gonna assume that you guys have a Rolo or a Dymo or some other sort of thermal printer. If you don't have a thermal printer, I, I probably wouldn't bother with inventory lab it's sort of they sort of go hand in hand and if you don't have money for a rollo get yourself a really cheap used dymo um, but this is going to be really really important this is part of why inventory lab is so good because you can print this stuff out really easily okay so you're going to be labeling your own stuff box content you want that on min max i wouldn't bother uh, doing this um, you can send this to Amazon if you want it to save stuff, but for us, I found this took too much time on the front end and it, it did not save us enough headache on the back end. So I would rather put out these fires and do my min maxes as I need to, as opposed to doing it for everything up front. 
Um, and then your shipping method, this is going to be small parcel delivery, SPD, um, unless you're selling and sending like an entire semi truck full um, or half a semi truck full, <laughs> then it would be a LTL. All right, so we're gonna create that batch. Oop, YouTube test two. Okay, so we've created this batch. Now what we can do is start adding items to it. And this is fairly simple. So I'm doing things, uh, the example I'm giving is a private batch. Um, I find this to be a little bit easier for beginners. Um, so let's let's find an item. So I've got here the uh, the four hour work week book. Um, you can search things by name or by UPC up here in the search bar. So I could type the four hour work week and I could find it this way. It'll probably give me a couple different options um, and you can figure out which one is yours. This one is actually mine. Um, if you want something a little more exact, you could use a UPC. Um, or the ASIN. There's that's not that ASIN. Um, we can use the UPC as well. So nine eight zero three zero seven. All right. So here's the UPC for the book, and that should give us just the one singular option. Boom. There we go. All right. Now this particular thing I have sold in the past. Um, we're gonna ignore this because this is an example. But if you do have something like that, you can just hit that replenish button. All right, so I'm gonna ignore that, create a new SKU. Um, this uh, reminder section, you probably won't be using this a whole lot. Um, we use this for expiration dates. So I can put in like if something expires in six months, I'll put the date that it expires and, or tell me to give me a reminder like 30 days before something expires. Um, but most people rarely use that. Tax code, I recommend leaving this blank. Battery, um, you'll have to select if it has a battery. This is a book, so obviously it does not, and this is not regulated. Total quantity, we just have the one sitting here next to us. Our average cost, let's say that this cost us 50 cents um, on clearance or something. All right, you can put your purchase date. Now I find this to be very important for your record keeping because if something were to happen and, and Amazon says, hey, prove that this is uh, authentic or prove that this is uh, whatever, you can see in Inventory Lab when you listed it or, or when you purchased it, and it makes it very, very easy to find your receipts because if you're scanning in your receipts and you're saving your receipt by the date, now you see, okay, Amazon asked for that item. I see it was from that date. So here's the receipt from that date. It takes me all of two minutes to find something like that. All right, put your supplier in. Um, I recommend keeping track of all of this, whether it's Walmart, Big Lots, wherever you're buying stuff from, um, put that in. Um, the expiration date, this is something I've seen a lot of people ask about. Let's say you're selling groceries. You're going to want to turn this eyeball on and then you're going to want to write where or when it expires. So June 8th of 2021. All right, let's just say it expires then. Then when you print your label, it will actually include this expiration date. Now, all of this, again, it's up in your settings. Um, so if you're selling grocery, you're going to want to make sure that you're printing expiration dates. OK, this is a book, so we don't bother with that. All right. Um, your shipping, again, this is in your settings. I recommend putting a, a rate of about 50 cents per pound as an estimate. Um, the more you sell, the cheaper this will be. The less you sell, the more expensive this will be. Um, your M SKU, this is something that's kind of interesting. Um, again, within your settings, you can set this up to automatically generate an M SKU. So you'll notice up here, I have my buy cost, my purchase date, and my supplier. I told Inventory Lab to automatically make my M SKU, my supplier, my purchase price, my sale price, because I'm saying I'm, I'm listing this for uh, $14.29. Um, and then usually when I bought it, I don't know why it's, huh, maybe I have something else in there right now. Um, but yeah, so I like to do that for my MSQ. You can leave this blank, it'll be automatically generated uh, regardless, so never bother with this. Condition, make sure that your condition is correct. Uh, this particular one is in rough condition <laughs> because my kids drew all over it. So this would be one of those used acceptable because um, it's got a lot of marker all over it. Okay. Um, all right. Now that's all for this section. Now we go over here to the right side. Um, this first column where it says new, these are FBM offers. This middle section are the used offers. The right section is the FBA. Now this isn't perfect for a book with this type of rank. There's probably a lot more FBA offers. This just shows you a couple of them. Uh, I can't show you every single one because there's, I don't know, probably hundreds of people on this listing. So it just shows you a couple just to give you a rough idea. Um, what I would recommend, like let's say you're selling it used. 
I'm just gonna match that lowest used price, all right? Now this would be an item where I would actually lose money on this if I were to send this in. Even if I got this for free, I'm pretty sure that I would lose money um, or come pretty darn close to losing money. Um, oh, I would make eight cents if I, uh, if I got this completely for free, okay? So let's just pretend that we got this for free. We're gonna click add to batch, all right? Now, this is our total batch. We can keep adding more and more stuff to this if you want. Um, I've got some uh, I've got some rollerblade electric things behind me. Um, we can add those in as well. Um, once we're done here, oh, <laughs> oh, that's why I don't have my printer connected. Usually at that point, when you enter that product, if your printer is connected to your computer, it will just automatically print your label right then and there and you put it right on your product. This was a huge thing for us because in the past we would print everything and then we'd have to go back and figure out what, what label went on which item. Whereas now we list one item, it prints the one label, we put that one label on our one item, there's no more searching for uh, where that label went. So for us, that was a huge time saver back when we were first starting, okay? All right, so uh, we've got that. I'm gonna add one more thing just to uh, diversify this a little bit. We got picked up some of these at Walmart the other day. Um, we were actually filming a video. I didn't put this in the video. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I mean, this was a freaking home run. Paid 50 bucks for it, selling for 300. Um, so we've got those. This particular item, uh, they are actually a little bit banged up. Um, there's a little bit of shelf wear on it. So I'm gonna list these as used like new because the box is, is a little bit dinged up. Um, and let's just discount that. Let's say 50 bucks off. All right, I'm still making a ton of money on that. So I don't mind giving people a little discount. And I think that'll probably help it move uh, quicker as well. All right, so we've got that, we've got that. We're gonna add this to batch. Um, and that will also push it out. Now I believe this one, yes. So this one has never actually been to Amazon. Um, so you will have to input the dimensions and all that stuff. Um, I did measure this right beforehand. It's like an 18 by 18 by 18 box and it weighs about 25 pounds. All right. So um, this is just this just means Amazon has never had this item in their warehouse. So they don't know what it weighs. They don't know its dimensions. So I'm telling them a rough estimate and then they'll probably update that once they get it in. They'll scan it themselves and weigh it themselves. Uh, but just to give them a rough estimate um, for fees to charge me. All right. Once this is live, uh, and it usually only takes a minute or two, sometimes it takes up to 15, but usually it's pretty, pretty fast. Uh, let me just delete that so we can move on with this shipment. Um, usually that goes pretty fast, just a couple minutes, wait it, wait it out, list your other items, and then come back to it. Once you're done with all of that, you can click this review batch button. Now, if you've seen people in our Hustle Buddies Facebook group post these like estimated screenshots, this is where they're getting it from. This is their number of items, their average sales rank, the, the total value, buy cost, and total net profit. This is where you see those huge things where it's like, wow, I spent 500 bucks and, and my total sale is $5,000 and my net profit is gonna be $2,000 or something like that, all right? So we're gonna click review batch. You can see we just have this one item. It's gonna send it to this one warehouse. So this one is pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Um, from there, you would click submit. Now I'm not personally going to click submit because that will actually create this shipment and I don't want to create this one shipment, um, but I will show you what the next steps look like um, from there. All right, so stay tuned. All right, so this is what that next screen would look like. Now this is actually a shipment that I did send out. Um, so we've got these, this is something, these were actually in my, my Walmart video from uh, last week or two weeks ago. All right, so we've got these, we listed them, and uh, it just told me the one warehouse. So you can see down here, it's in my working shipments. This is in the box content information. Um, since it's just going to the one warehouse, it doesn't make me like figure all of that stuff out. Um, it just takes me right into this. So what you're gonna do, you have your box right here um, so this is box one. If you have a like a, a USB scanner thing, this is where it really comes in handy because you can just press start, start scanning stuff. We've done a lot of videos about that in the past. You've probably seen us doing that. Uh, it's that beeping sound that you hear when I'm listing things. Um, or you can just do things manually. I've got 12 of these. I know what box are going in, so I can just assign them all 12 to that one box. All right. Once you're done with that, then you transmit your updated boxes. This is when it will actually send it off to um, to Amazon, okay? So uh, from there, let me show you uh, the next screen real fast as well. All right, now real quick, I did forget to say when you uh, do actually click that transmit button, you're able to either put the box weight and dimensions here or in Seller Central, it doesn't matter which one you pick. Um, 
I would do one or the other. And then if you ever get confused and you can't find this within Seller Central, you just click down here. So this is as far as you can get within Inventory Lab. Once you send your box content information, your time within Inventory Lab is done. And then you'll have to go over to Seller Central to actually complete this shipment. Okay, so let's jump over there real fast. All right, so we clicked on that button over there on the side. I'll show you guys again. We just clicked right there on this. And this brings up the uh, Seller Central portal for that shipment. Now I'm trying to hide some of our information so you can't see the very top. Um, but here we are in that same shipment. None of this you have to change. Everything is already set up exactly how it should be. You see it's got the small parcel delivery. Your address is up there. Everything should be the same. Um, so we keep scrolling down here. You've got the one box. Um, this box weighs about 10 pounds. Um, and it is a 10 by 10 by 10. This is a very binary shipment. <laughs> all right, so we put in all that stuff. You're gonna click calculate. Um, uh, UPS is, is who you use for this. It's really your only option. Um, it's gonna calculate your cost. Now remember I said you should estimate about 50 cents per pound. Sometimes it's higher, sometimes it's lower. This shipment is tiny. This only has a few things in it. Um, and so because of that, we're actually getting charged quite a bit more. I mean, we're paying, this is about 70 cents per pound instead of 50 cents per pound. Um, so it is higher, but eh, that's okay. It's not the end of the world. Um, accept these charges like so. Um, now you've got, uh, if you made a mistake, anything like that, you have 40 or 24 hours to avoid those charges, um, but that should be fine. From there, it'll open up this, your shipping label. Um, again, we have a thermal printer. We use a Rolo. We talk about the Rolo a lot because the Rolo can print both our item labels in Inventory Lab, what we just did, and also in Seller Central, you can print these four by six shipping labels as well. And it takes you about two seconds to flip them over. We did a video about this. Uh, the people who say like they don't like flipping it over, personally, I have never understood that because it, honest to goodness, takes us like a few seconds to switch it over. So maybe if you don't have the space for it. Um, you don't have to worry about this. Uh, well, I mean, you can select today or whatever. And then you'd print your box labels. All right, once you print that, it'll open up a file and it will print um, <laughs> the last little side note. I know it says the picture shows you things on this box. This is just because the graphic designer that they hired for this doesn't know uh, <laughs> logistics. You should actually be putting these on the top. Just don't put them across the seam. Um, but UPS requests that they be put on the top of the box. That's how they receive them. If you put them on the side, then your box will be flipped sideways. All right. Okay. That is basically it. That is uh, the summary of how to list, pack, and ship things using Inventory Lab. All right. If you guys have other questions, feel free to drop them down in the comment section below. Don't forget to join our Facebook group if you're not a part of that. We've got a huge group. As of the time of recording this, we've got about 22,000 awesome, super helpful, uplifting sellers that are over there. So check that out. Um, if you don't have Inventory Lab yet, you can click down below to use our link. We always appreciate that. It helps give us a little bit of kickback for putting out this free content. Um, but yeah, that's it guys. All right, hustle on. We'll see you.